Old Diplano with the llama whispering in my ear. What's that, Mr. Llama? This is a bag builder game for two to five players, seeing you putting different kinds of materials into your bag, pulling them out, doing things with them on locations and getting the most points to try and win the game. Are you reviewing Altiplano? Quince, how do you keep getting into my house? Matt, didn't we play this a year and a half ago and decide that it wasn't good enough for review? Well, yeah, but now there's an expansion uh, featuring a man that sort of walks about a bit. Hmm, okay. And does this man make the game amazing? Yes, Quince, it does make the game better. That's not what I asked. Uh, well, look, it's... Look, it's honestly not that exciting, but I really, I really, really love it. Matt. In an oversaturated market, it's our job to cherry pick the board games that matter. Yeah, yeah, look, I, I know that, but you've got Wiz War in your collection. You've, I've seen it. You've still got Wiz War. Does Wiz War matter? Okay, you know what? You know what? You can review Altiplano, but I'm giving you five minutes, what? all right? And frankly, you've already spent a lot of that time talking to me, so... What? Chop chop! Ah, uh, Altiplano is based on... Uh, it's, uh, it's kind of a spiritual, spiritual sequel to Orlean, which I don't have time to talk about, but is honestly quite good. <laughs> uh -uh. Yeah, quite good. Half-baked assertion, docked 20 seconds. Oh. Okay, the main difference here between Orléans and El Plano, apart from the fact that obviously we've shifted from France to the Andes, which is frankly going to get you some air miles, is the fact that in Orléans, every time you use stuff from your bag, at the end of the round, everything goes back into your bag, making it entirely random. Whereas in El Plano, if I turn that and that into something else, before it goes back into the bag, it goes back into my little box, meaning that you never actually Empty that box until your bag is empty, so you'll always cycle through everything you've got. You use these tokens to activate abilities on your player board, like turning wood into canoes, or making blankets out of wool, or using food to uh, entice or grow a llama? What was that? Food? Llamas? I get bonus time every time I mention llamas. Llama, llama, llama. So crucially, but weirdly, the materials you use to make things actually don't get used up. They go into your box with whatever you just made, spiraling you off wonderfully into economic heaven. Everyone starts off with a similar board, but you can buy new bits to slot onto your machine, with each area of these boards corresponding to a location on this circular map that you physically move around. But resources in each location can run out. And when you find a point where there's a little area with nothing on it anymore, the game is over. Better resources get you more points, but you've also got a private warehouse, warehouse for money, that you'll want to siphon goods into at some point in the game. Partly to get them out of circulation and partly to earn yourself mad, mad points. What? Well, since when is this? Radio 4! Ah, uh, The warehouse is, is weird. You have to fill rows to get points, but you can only start new rows with resources that don't have a row that's unfinished with them in already, but you can plug unwanted gaps with corn that you largely get from walking further down the road track, which in turn lets you pull more pieces out of the bag each turn. Got it? Great! How am I doing for time? Uh, llama, 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 chameleon! Oh, come on! The coolest choice from Orléans is Back with a Vengeance, being able to place resources in locations without finishing them immediately, which means I can come back and finish that canoe next turn. Although the problem is, if you're not careful, you can find your board being quickly gummed up with half-finished projects, when you'd really rather that this wood and food got freed up for completing other things. The problem with Altiplano is it is big and fiddly and very long, an absolute table hog that ambles along with the sort of pace of a game that you might play to calm people down after a particularly invigorating Sunday Village fate. Oh, you sit there, you know what you're going to do on your turn, and you just have to wait for it to be your turn. Uh, could you possibly bring us another pot of tea? Ah, very good, thank you so much. And that's fine. Except the problem is, Altiplano is mostly so much more fun when you all play simultaneously, taking your turns 
at the same time as we saw recently in the other bag game, Quacks of Quillim Bim Bim Bim. And mostly in Altiplano, you can do this, all taking your turns together. But the problem is you can't always do that. There are some points in the game where you might do something that messes up someone else's turn, but there's very few of these points, but there are some, which means you kind of can't really do it. And that's fine if you're playing on a lazy Saturday afternoon, you've got all the time and tea in the world, but if it's a Wednesday evening and people need to get home, well, it can drag. Uh, quickly now, the expansion, The Traveller, is about a man who wanders around, uh, he just wanders around doing stuff and you can follow him and you can sell him things and there's a bit that goes in the middle of the table which means that things you sell him, uh, well other people can buy them and only other people, you can't buy them back. And if you sell things to him, then you get, uh, you get these sort of, these pink crystals which you can spend on, on on buying things, it's, it's, it's really good. It basically solves the whole problem with the main game and the fact that there's not enough interaction to stop you all playing simultaneously most of the time. But with this, you've got these extra powers, you've got this market that's shared, you've got the fact that he moves around the board. Where's he gonna go next? It means that it's fine to just take it in turns and you're always watching other people's plays. It's actually a game that hangs together well. And does it make the game longer? I, I don't know, maybe slightly. It's probably, it's still really very long. It's, it's really, it goes on for a very long time. <laughs> the Traveller adds meat to the game without overcomplicating things massively and turns a game that's pretty good into a game that's pretty great. Even if the new area you add to the map does sort of expand the game and how much room it takes up on a table into the realms of slight silliness. Oh, oh come on, it's like, it, it, it's a bit silly, it's not, it's not completely silly, it's like a term of phrase, but it is a bit silly. So do I recommend Altiplano? Uh, I don't, I don't know. I mean, the expansion does make it a lot better, but it's also more expensive and it's still a very long, slow, fiddly game that takes a lot of time and effort to set up and there are just better games out there. If you want a game of madly putting your hand into a bag and pulling things out and swearing, Quacks is fantastic. Do you want to do gentle, pleasant things with livestock and materials? Lowlands is fantastic and fast. Want to poke, frankly, too many colourful things around for probably four hours while sitting in near silence with friends? A feast for Odin! It's your pal! It's your baby! A Nordic smorgasbord of so many bits that frankly cries out for good company. But the thing is, while I honestly can't say I'd play Altiplano over any of the other games I've just mentioned. I sort of just love it. There's something deeply soothing about hoarding cacao or crafting glass jugs or knitting lots of wool blankets and then popping them into the warm safety of my warehouse. There's something deeply comforting about the Andean colors and a deeply rose tinted view of rustic craftsmanship. And not everyone is going to see the appeal of sitting and fiddling and fussing with friends quietly for hours and hours. Lord knows in the past we have royally taken the mickey out of games that are quite sedate and massive as this. But there's something about this that just makes me inexplicably warm inside in a way that almost undermines me as a critic, frankly. It's like, it's crunchy and and toast, it's like swimming in toast. And is that enough? Is that enough? I, 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 I'm gonna say that it is. You do know they're not llamas. What's an alpaca?